Today I'm taking a look at the brand new Amazon Echo third generation. I'll be unboxing it, giving you my overall opinion on the new sound and telling you whether or not it's worth buying. Welcome back to another episode of Steve's Reviews. If you're new to the channel and you find today's video helpful, don't be afraid to press that subscribe button. It'll really, really help me out. And if you're already subscribed, don't be afraid to press that notification bell. Again, it'll really help me out and it'll help you see Stu's Reviews episodes as soon as they land. Now, a word of warning before we begin. If you have an Amazon Echo device already and you use the term to activate it, my advice is press that mute button because you will be very frustrated by the end of this review if you don't. So moving on, let's take a look at the Amazon Echo third generation. This is the Amazon Echo 3 in the newest color to the Echo range, Twilight Blue. It also features new speakers which are powered by Dolby to play 360 degree audio which Amazon describes as having a premium sound. It borrows Neodium drivers from the Echo Plus and partners them with a 3 inch woofer for what Amazon claims as stronger bass. This single device can also be paired with another Echo 3 or an Echo Plus 2 for stereo sound. It's a pretty standard design, mirroring that of the Echo Plus 2, with only four buttons on top and an aux and power port on the back. And lastly, obviously this device sports this signature Alexa light on the top, which looks great as always. Right, first things first, we need to get this open, so let's give this a go. Now I've always liked the Amazon packaging of their boxes. First of all, they don't use any plastic in the boxes, but also, it's just a brilliant design. Okay, so that's like that. I'm not gonna use the instructions because I already know how to pair these things up and it should be relatively straightforward. First of all, the first thing I noticed when looking at this is that it looks very, very, very similar to the Amazon Echo Plus. Now this is the first time or the plus second generation anyway. This is the first time they've used that kind of rounded top design. In the previous Echo, which is the second generation, I'll flash up an image now, you can see the top is almost cut off with a samurai sword, it's completely flat. This definitely takes its design from the Amazon Echo Plus. And supposedly, it's also supposed to have some speaker technology from the Echo Plus as well, although, what Amazon do say is that the mids and highs are a lot clearer on this, and also the bass is a lot louder as well. So I'll be the judge of that as soon as I can get it up and running. Now, unfortunately, it's not powered by USB, which was one of my criticisms with all of the last range of Echo devices, because I like the ability to use USB cables, because I've got thousands of them, and it means as well that I can plug it directly into my PC through a USB cable. This is not USB, so you will have to find a specialist cable to get this plugged in or use the power adapter that comes in the box. So let's plug it in and see what happens. Okay, we're on. I'm gonna go into the app here and see if I can pair it up. Descarga la app Alexa y sigue las instrucciones. Bringing your device online, just a moment. As you can see, it reels off lots and lots of different languages straight away. And in the app, it's already come up with, let's set up your new Echo. So it knows I've got that already. Without doing anything, it's already recognized that this is in the area, whether that's through my account. Oh God, here we go, problem. Sorry, setup isn't going as planned. To continue setup. Wi-Fi isn't set up on this device. You can find instructions in the help section of your Alexa app. Taking a bit longer than I anticipated. Well, the setup hasn't gone to plan, unfortunately. Uh, what do I do here? Do I just start again? Let's try this again. Plug it in. Well, that's a bit disappointing. Maybe something had had a hiccup. Now, the Amazon devices are pretty straightforward to set up, but obviously something has gone wrong here. So I'll try this again. Now in setup mode. Good. Please follow the instructions in your Alexa app. Okay, well, I think it's pretty straightforward now once I've got it going. 
but that was pretty annoying. This device is ready. Yay! Good, get the champagne out. Okay, I think we are up and running, so let's give this a quick go. Alexa, turn off studio. Okay. Very nice, very quick. Alexa, turn on studio. Okay. And we're back. Very good. Okay, that seems quite quick, actually. Does it seem quicker than the other devices? Oh, how long did that setup take? Oh, I should have stopped that. About five minutes, I think, overall, which was a bit more time than I wanted, but a lot of that was just waiting for the device to connect to the internet. Overall, out of 10, give it a six, which is a little bit poor considering that Amazon are prioritizing easy setup, especially in their last keynote where they were going on about ease of use. I mean, it's straightforward and simple, but it's just a little bit frustrating. Could be made better, wasn't that bad. Five or six out of 10. Now that the setup is out of the way, let's give this a go in terms of its sound. So let's connect it to Bluetooth so I can play some no copyright music and not get that copyright strike. Okay. Okay, so it's a little bit quiet at the moment. Now I'll put it on full volume here. I'm just gonna start turning it up slowly using my phone. Ooh, wow. That's a very rich sound. Okay, I'm on about half the volume here. It's all very clear still. Wow. Yeah, that's really good. Okay, not bad. Not the best song to put on 100% volume. So I'm gonna change the song here and we're gonna blast it right up and see how clear the lows, mids and highs are. So, okay, different song now. I mean, that's very good for quite a small speaker. Still only on about 75%. So I'm going to boost it up a little bit more now to full. Okay, right. Well, do you know what? Actually, that is a very, very, very good sound indeed. Maybe on full volume, there is a slight loss of clarity, but that is only when you go full volume on this and on your phone. But overall, that handles most volumes perfectly. I am super impressed. My initial impressions are that this is a fantastic update to the range. Now at the moment, this is 89 pounds, which I don't know, is that a good value? That is quite a high price for Amazon devices because quite often you'll find that Amazon prices are priced way below much of the competitors. And actually, when you consider this against other options such as the HomePod, this is a couple of hundred pounds cheaper. Um, but actually, I think the quality of sound that you get is phenomenal for that price. As always, I'll leave a link in the description below so you can check this out for yourself. Now, the thing that is perplexing me is you put this next to the Amazon Echo Plus, which actually has a very similar sort of sound, although this does have a few updates to the sound. What the difference is, because the Echo Plus is more expensive, that comes out, I think, at about 140. Yeah, it's currently 140 pounds. Now, really, with this upgrade in sound, the only real difference between this and the Echo Plus is that the Echo Plus has a built-in Zigbee uh, system. This doesn't have that. 
But actually, how many people need that? I'm sure some people out there are screaming at me right now because you've used the Zigbee system in the Echo Plus, and I apologise. I know there are some people out there who probably will. But I think most people already have a system, already have something that controls their smart home. So, should you buy one? Now, if you have an Amazon second generation Echo, or even the first generation Echo, the answer to that is absolutely. I think the sound difference is just phenomenal absolutely phenomenal and it's definitely definitely worth upgrading to this right now if you have an amazon echo plus probably not the sound is very similar this sounds a little bit better overall it has better clarity but but it's not miles and miles apart so if you have an amazon echo plus second gen already the second gen not the first gen then absolutely i would probably stick with what you've got but those that already have an Echo 2nd Gen or Echo 1st Gen, now is the time to upgrade without a doubt. And if you're brand new to Echo devices, this is a really good place to start. Now, interestingly, this isn't Amazon's premium Echo speaker, and neither is the Amazon Echo Plus anymore. They're bringing a brand new speaker out called the Echo Studio next month, which is November 2019. And I'll be taking a look at that as well. So I'm really excited for that. But I guess the big difference between this one and the Echo Studio is going to be the fact the Studio is a big piece of audio equipment, whereas this is much smaller and much sleeker. So if you don't particularly listen to a great deal of music but want a smart home assistant that can play a bit of music at a good level of sound quality, then this will be a lot better for you than the Echo Studio, which is designed really for people who love audio. So I'm really excited for that one. But to summarise, getting all the way back here, should you buy one of these? I did, and I really, really like it. And that concludes today's review. Guys, a massive, massive shout out to all my current patrons. Without you, Stu's reviews wouldn't be Stu's reviews. And if you want to join me on Patreon, head on over there. I'll leave a link in the description. So go and check it out. Other than that, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and I'll see you back for another episode of Studio Reviews soon. Before you go, consider supporting me on my Patreon page by clicking here. It'll give you some great discounts on stuff I've reviewed and helps me to continue doing reviews. If you want to see some fun stuff, click here to see the highlights of Studio Reviews. And as a friendly reminder, click this button to subscribe.